الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم As to our followers, my dear respected brothers in Islam, just a bit of advice uh, as we are now يعني, on the doors of the last 10 nights of Ramadan these are the nights in which uh, Laylat al-Qadr is, is to be found and people seek uh, Laylat al-Qadr during the last 10 and this is why يعني, now it becomes really important um, right towards the end of the month uh, perfecting the end of the month actually this is what really counts because what uh, counts is in the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says innamal a'malu bil khawatim he says he says that the the deeds that one does the uh, the the, يعني, the the look the point of look and the point of judgment is how they ended towards the end and you know this is even in our worldly life for example if someone was to build a house you start the house you start building you put all the wood together and the concrete and whatever and then it's all about the ending touch you know what kind of paint you're going to put at the end how you're going to decorate the house what kind of lighting are you going to put outside so it's all about the end you get the main the big stuff at the beginning all done just like a car as well they'll put the metal all together at the beginning and everything needs to have at the beginning it'll look disgusting from the very beginning but then right towards the end it's about the end how is it going to look like so what color paint we're going to put at the end the leather inside the stitching on the outside and the inside and that's where where it actually counts even in our worldly life we look towards the end and we see how we're going to beautify and perfect the end well this is the same thing in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says al-a'malu bil khawatim that the deeds one does they are based on the endings of them so how you end it will dictate how the beginning was and make sure you perfect the ending so it is by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he placed Laylat al-Qadr towards the end why because everyone's efforts becomes increased for Laylat al-Qadr which is at the end which is beautiful that's what we want we want to perfect the last 10 days we want to perfect the ending of Ramadan so this is the first thing now I'm just going to give a few practical advice inshallah on how to approach this uh, this whole thing of Laylat al-Qadr in the last 10 nights the very first thing that one has to do is he has to pray Salat al-Isha and Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah because this is the Fard and if you've missed out on the Fard then what's the point of doing a Nafila? Because everything between Salat al-Isha and Salat al-Fajr, mm -hmm. everything you're going to do, whatever it is of good deeds, it is not going to be fard, it's going to be a nafila. So how does it make sense that you lost upon yourself a fard and then you want to go and engage in some sort of يعني, uh, voluntary act, even though it's still permissible and acceptable, but it just doesn't make sense. So make sure that the first thing, the first priority in your mind is these last 10 days and don't follow the, يعني, the, the odd nights and so on because يعني, you become lazy like that. Take the last 10 days, all of them seriously. The first thing is you begin with Isha in the Masjid and Salat al-Fajr as well in the Masjid in Jama'ah because of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Salamun hiya hatta matla al-Fajr. That's when it ends. So make sure that these two fards are done and performed in the Masjid with Jama'ah and then after this, you'll feel comfortable in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extra during the night because of obviously of, of Laylat al-Qadr. Now, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man qama Laylat al-Qadr imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqadda min dhambi. So the first thing that you do is Salat al-Isha, Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah. Second thing is, يعني, you put a lot of effort in your time and in your, in your days and in your nights, you put a lot of effort to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this night. But what does it mean? Man qama laylat al-qadr. You see, there are three ahadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that have to do with Ramadan and this idea of man qama. So the first one was man sama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqadda min dhammih. You know this hadith. I don't want to explain, but I just want to show you the three parts of it. So the first one, whoever fasts Ramadan out of Iman and seeking the reward of Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah forgives him for his sins, the previous sins. Okay, if you didn't, if your sins weren't forgiven because of your fasting of Ramadan, then there's another solution. The hadith says, Man qama Ramadan iman wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqadda min dhambi. Whoever يعني, stands in worship, Ramadan, the entire Ramadan, that is the Taraweeh prayer that we pray. Iman and Wahtisaban out of Iman and seeking the reward from Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal wipes away and forgives his previous sins. So if you weren't forgiven from your sins because of your fasting during the day, 
you have an opportunity to be forgiven all your previous sins because of the night prayer that you pray. Now, even if that's not achieved, there's one more solution. Man qama laylat al-qadr, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqadda min dhambi. Whoever stands in worship, laylat al-qadr, you see how it's gone from 30 days of fasting to 30 days of qiyam. If you still didn't get Allah's forgiveness in that, then Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives you just one more thing. Whoever stands, Laylat al Qadr, only this one night, Iman and out of Iman and Ihtisab and seeking the reward of Allah, the same result. SubhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy is open, and even in one night it could be achieved. So, this is why it's very important that you don't lose hope and look at the 20 days that just passed by. And you say, you know, I lost them anyway. What am I just going to, يعني, what am I going to make up for right now? Don't worry about this. Now, the last 10 nights, you have that one more opportunity to be forgiven all the previous sins. And when the ulama spoke about this hadith, له ما تقدم من ذنبه, they said this includes the major and the minor sins. Both included in this غفر له. Now, so we said that the second thing is that you, you put all your efforts into worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this night. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says in the hadith describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said, مَا قَامَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَيْلَةً بِأَكْمَلِهَا She said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never stood up in salat an entire night. What that means is that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give some of the night, part of the night salat, part of the night dhikr, part of the night dua, part of the night reading the Qur'an. He did never ever stood an entire night in salat from the beginning of the night until the end of it. He divided his night. So what this means, if this is the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we take that from it. So you don't stand the entire night in worship. Divide the night, some of it for, for worship. So if that's salat al taraweeh with the imam until the, the, yani, the wutub, then that's all right. If you want to pray extra after this, that's fine. That's no problem. You read some Quran, some dhikr, some dua. Yani mix it up. That's what it is. Now, this is the other thing. And this is really important. And please take this advice seriously. This one here. You know, most of us just look and, and put the efforts during the night. And we're focused during the night. And then the day we really forget what is the importance of the day towards Laylat Al Qadr? What importance does the day have towards Laylat Al Qadr? My brothers, during the day you're supposed to, yani, especially these last day, last 10 days, lessen your sins. Because the sins during the day affects one's worship during the night. The sins during the day affects one's worship during the night. During the day, you need to act like a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a true slave. Be humble, uh, yani humiliate yourself, be, uh, be calm and soft and gentle during the day. Do the good in the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to benefit from Laylat al Qadr. You know, don't be yani, someone that's huge during the day and then you come running to Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy during the night. They both work together. During the day, you need to, yani, it's like think of a castle. And there's the doors and the king is behind the doors and you're standing outside. The doors haven't opened. How, how would your state be outside the doors? Most definitely you're thinking about now when the doors open and we go inside to the king, what am I going to ask him? What do I need? What are my hopes? What are my wishes? What are my requests? What kind of yani, sins I want forgiven? This is what you need to be thinking during the day. And when Maghrib time comes, the doors open. The doors of Laylat al Qadr open, the doors of Allah Azzawajal's mercy are opening, and now you walk in. So the day has a huge effect on how your night will be. So during the day, cut the sins out, the backbiting, the swearing, the whatever it is, cut it all out in your life, just at least for these last 10 days. Cut them out and act like a slave, act very humbly towards Allah Azzawajal during the day. In your sujood during the day, ask Allah Azzawajal to allow you to benefit and take the most from Laylat al Qadr. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal in the, in the sujood of Salat al-Asr, in the sujood of Salat al-Dhuhr, ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you to worship Him during this night and do the good. Yani for example, during the day, give a sadaqah in the intention that Allah Azza wa Jal gives you the strength and the energy to worship Him during that night. In, during the day, go and if you have your mother, she's still alive, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to preserve the mothers that are alive. You go to your mother. Go to your mother and do some good to her in the intention that Allah Azza wa gives you the energy, the strength, the ability to worship Him during that night. 
So your day, my brother, is very important. What it, it counts, yani, crucial towards how you're going to spend your night. So ask him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make that easy for you. Uh, and and yani, this, is, this, is the, nah, this is the advice. So inshallah ta'ala, we, we make the most of it. Just one more point on the hadith of man qama laylat al-qadr. This is related for women. So if you have wives that yani, actually fall into a situation like this, you can give them this advice. Now, you know, man qama laylat al-qadr. Yani, so you, you understand that yani, a, a lot of or the, the major worship that is happening during this night is the salat that people perform. But sometimes you have a يعني, woman during the last 10 nights or whatever it is, their, their cycle comes by. And obviously if the cycle is by, then she cannot pray. So what happens then and how is this hadith relevant and related to her? Very simple. As we explained, qama laylat al-qadr doesn't necessarily mean to stand up in salat. Qama laylat al-qadr, if I recited Quran the whole night, then that's qama laylat al-qadr. I stood in worship. And I stood in worship doesn't necessarily, as we said, standing in salah, meaning you took this time, this night to worship Allah Azza Any kind of worship you do, that is qama laylat al-qadr. Whether it's salat, dhikr, so the woman, يعني, she doesn't have to lose hope and become depressed and so on because, you know, she cannot pray, it doesn't matter. She can still read Quran, make dua, dhikr, a lot of things she can do. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also directs Aisha radiallahu anha when she asked him the question that if I do find Laylat al-Qadr, what should I do? He said to make the dua, Allahumma innaka afuun, tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'fu anni. Very important to, to make this dua and, and to realize this dua. And during the day also be conscious of the fact that you have a lot of things you want from Allah Azza wa I mean, don't you have sins that you want Allah to wipe them from you? Don't you have a Jannah that, that don't you, yeah, and you've heard of the news of the paradise and you really want it? Haven't you heard also of the news of the hellfire and you really want to stay away from it? So if that's really what you want, then make sure you're asking Allah Azza wa Jal this during Laylat al-Qadr and don't yeah, and you waste the opportunity. And please, one more time, take the day very seriously. Your day is going to dictate how your night is going to be. Some of the Salaf, rahimahumullah, Yani, when a night used to go by and did not wake up, they'd wake up and they'd blame themselves because of what they did during the day. They said, my sins during the day, Allah Azza wa Jal disallowed me from my sins during the day not to worship Him during the night. Because worshipping Allah during the night is a special thing Allah Azza wa Jal gives selected servants of Him. So it depends how your day carries out and rolls out is how you'll worship Him during the night. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to benefit from Laylat al-Qadr. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of the paradise, people of the Qur'an. Innahu wa liyudhalika al-Qadr wa alayhi. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.